uh, there was an article that came out on CoinDesk last week where uh, a Google analyst, uh, like financial analyst who, who works with Google a lot, uh, he wrote a paper on Bitcoin. Uh, you know, he supported the idea of regulation, but kind of made a distinction between um, Bitcoin businesses, which should be regulated, and the Bitcoin users, which should not be regulated. Um, what was your overall takeaway from this report that, that this Google analyst wrote? Yeah, I actually uh, took the time out to um, read his full article that he wrote on the Internet Policy Review because I'm going to be planning on writing a response to it uh, to be published on CoinBrief. And this guy, um, his name is Andy Yi. He works, for, he works as an analyst for Google's Asia-Pacific division. Um, and basically what he said was he used this, um, this idea that was created by these two authors in 2004 of, um, like the, the, he broke it down. He broke the internet. They, these guys broke the internet down into layers. Uh, so there was like, like an onion. Yeah. There's like a, like, like a physical layer, um, like, an access layer, and then there's an information layer and a user layer, and so um, so the the very the most basic layer, the very bottom one, uh, Yi called the logical layer, is where all the innovation takes place. It's it's just like the internet protocol is just a basic platform where any kind of application can be developed, kind of like Ethereum, and then you have the physical layer, which would be like the access points, the internet service providers, uh, like the hardware required to run the internet protocol and things like that. And then you have the information layer, which is where the applications are being developed, these websites are being created, online stores are being created. Then you have the user layer, which is, you know, consumers, um, business people actually running their businesses and things like that. And he took that, which, you know, I, I thought about that, you know, in terms of the internet, it actually makes a lot of sense. But then he took that and applied it to Bitcoin, and he's like, okay, so Bitcoin is the logical layer. It's like the internet protocol. And then we have, uh, you know, the, the development layer where it's like all th these people are like adding all these things on top of Bitcoin. And you have the information layer, and these are the, this is where like all the, like the illicit activities are being, or businesses are being developed, like Silk Road, terrorist finance, blah, blah, blah. And then the user layer, which is people like me and you, and we buy things with Bitcoin, we sell our services uh, for Bitcoin. And he's like, all of the above layers need to be regulated, but the very bottom uh, logical layer needs to remain unregulated so the developers can you know, do whatever they want without being restricted. Okay. Um, I take issue with that because, you know, he, I think it's a, I think he, it was a false equivalency between Bitcoin and the internet. I think he, um, I think he mistakenly linked Bitcoin and blockchain technology and treated them as one thing. Uh, but, but, but that's not the case. You have the blockchain, which can be used for, you know, literally anything. But then you have Bitcoin, um, which is specifically a monetary technology, um, specifically a payment system with a currency. It just happens to operate on a blockchain. And so he, he was basically saying, keep the blockchain unregulated, but regulate everything else. Um, but you, you, can't, you can't do that with Bitcoin. Um, one, because the blockchain is capable of so many things. And that the layers that he used, uh, the internet layers that he used, don't really apply to Bitcoin because those layers are kind of blurred by Bitcoin. Because you can kind of transition on Bitcoin between those layers because um, basically it's decentralized is, is the, the whole point. This is what I'm trying to get at here because the internet is centralized at the point of access. So you can you can regulate the gatekeepers, which is what Andy Yee called things like, uh, which is what he called the exchanges. They're the gatekeepers, and you have to regulate the gatekeepers. But you can't do that with Bitcoin because all these things that seem you know monolithic and cent like centralized points of access, uh, you know they're actually not, and you can decentralize them all on the blockchain, and it's going to happen. 
So, um, you know, it's literally Im impossible to provide, to enact any kind of, you know, lasting regulation to Bitcoin um, simply because it's decentralized and, you know, that, that layer theory doesn't really apply to Bitcoin is what I took from it. Yeah, it sounds to me that like you, I mean, it's an interesting type of analysis to do to try and make sense of the situation and try and apply like a reasonable regu type of regulation to it and what should be regulated or not. But at the end of the day, it's really hard to break up Bitcoin into layers because there is no clear cut line between this group of users and this group of developers and this group of you know business people, right? A user can be can start up their own business any day, right? With with the right amount of like support and and funding and uh, skills and expertise, a user can can become a business person. Or if they learn the developing skills, they can become a developer. It, or you know, it, there's there's all kinds of gray areas in between, and, and it's it's all mixing together into this brand new type of ecosystem, and like. If it, and and that doesn't even take into account the 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 fact that if you did decide to regulate like a small layer of business groups, um, that doesn't even take into account th that you know that restricts the free market uh, of businesses should be able to do what whatever they want to satisfy the customer. And if they if they mess up, then you know the customers learn that and stop using them and and they go out of business. Uh, so I mean, there's there's like I'm, I'm nitpicking a little bit with with this type of analysis. I think it's. I'm glad that he wrote it. I think we do need more in-depth analysis like this from people who have influential positions at companies like Google. But we shouldn't take them as you know, as like this 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 great like amazing like thing that we should all believe like oh wow they they nailed it like this is the this is the right way to regulate let's divide everything up into clear distinct layers and no one can you know be in two layers at once because <laughs> it, it's that's too complicated like um it's interesting to think about but we we i don't think that you can divide the ecosystem into clear-cut layers and you know we got to be careful to not try and do that because that's a really serious oversimpli oversimplification of the ecosystem. Yeah, his like his main point was that um, anything that has to do with the consumer aspect needs to be regulated. So like exchanges, which he called gatekeepers, because those are points of access to Bitcoin, and then businesses. But then you keep the blockchain. It's or he didn't actually call it the blockchain. He just said you keep Bitcoin itself unregulated. So the innovators can develop all these all these um, projects and and services and products on the Bitcoin platform, and then you know let open it up for people to use. Uh, but that's not how Bitcoin works. Like, right. Like you know these these gatekeepers he talks about they're not rigid and they're not constant the ex like the exchanges like we were just talking about um people are people are starting to decentralize the exchanges um and you know like i said he mistakenly connected the blockchain technology in general and bitcoin he combined those as one technology which you you can't do because there are countless different currencies that use blockchain technology but they're not bitcoin and um well, you know, one of his main arguments for keeping the blockchain itself deregulated was that it's fully traceable because the blockchain is a public ledger of every transaction. Well, um, Cody Wilson and Amir Taki are working on Dark Wallet, which is going to be implementing fully anonymized uh, Bitcoin payments um, through payment mixing. So you can't. Tr track your transactions on the blockchain and then there's an altcoin called uh, darkcoin um, and its main feature is that um, th there's a setting on the wallet where you can anonymize your transactions and they don't show up on the blockchain so yeah what layer do those fall into yeah right? what layer is that Andy <laughs> like um, and yeah. 
and and another... there's there's another example that I thought of as well, like um, uh, Satoshi Dice, which is like pretty much the first gambling website that was created for Bitcoin. Um, they utilized the blockchain to allow people to, you know, uh, gamble, gamble with small amounts of Bitcoin or large amounts if they want to. Uh, you know, what is what does that fall under? Like, what, I mean, does that does that classify as a business? Is that regulated? But it's on the blockchain. It's it's a specific type of tool that was developed on the blockchain directly, um, which is you know kind of controversial in, in in the community a little bit because it creates a lot of kind of spammy transactions as people roll the dice constantly on the blockchain. But for our point here, like, uh, what? what layer is that you know that's that's one of those that's like on the on the outside of it it appears like a business it's it's a gambling website that you know makes some profit so in that way it's a business but then it's also a tool that's built into the blockchain itself the thing with bitcoin is businesses can be directly on the blockchain now and you can't divide that in a lot of cases yeah another big uh, mistake he made was that um he said the most important thing about Bitcoin was not the monetary aspect of Bitcoin, but the development platform that Bitcoin provided. So it's so he's basically saying uh, Bitcoin isn't about the currency, but it's about the things that can be built on top of the blockchain. Well, that that comes from you know combining the blockchain in general and Bitcoin, the currency, into one inseparable technology. Um, which totally is not the case at all. Um, but, you know, I would argue that the most important thing about Bitcoin are the actual Bitcoins because, it, you know, it actually changed the way, you know, finance is conducted. It, you know, yeah. it changed money. So, um, and in the process, yes, yeah, Satoshi developed this blockchain, which can be used for like an infinite amount of other things. Um, but you know, I'm like I said, I'm going to be writing an article about it. So you know, listeners and viewers, you know, I definitely encourage you to to look out for the article and read it because I'll be explaining my positions, you know, much more clearly, and they'll make a lot more sense. If your um, article is out by the time I upload this individual clip of Andy Yee's paper, then I, I can put it in the description for people for people to look okay. at. Okay. Well, that. I'm I'm going to start on it tonight, and it should be finished, you know, by tomorrow. So, um, Great. but yeah, like my. You know, my, my message to Andy Yee is that, you know, learn a little bit more about Bitcoin. Uh, it doesn't seem like you really know what it is because um, these Internet layers, while they're definitely interesting when applied to the Internet, um, don't really make a whole lot of sense with Bitcoin because Bitcoin is just not centralized in the same way that the Internet is. So it can't be governed in the same way that the Internet is. It's two different things. They both de they both help decentralize, um, you know, services and functions that were originally centralized in society. But it's it's two it's two very separate things. And and you know the blockchain doesn't even necessarily need to be on the internet. Uh, it can be broadcasted from radio towers. It can be broadcasted <laughs> from satellites. You know so. They're they're they they're two very separate things. Yeah, and plus my last point is that um, that layer tech that layer theory, while it's really interesting and um, you know it's pretty valid for internet in its current state, as the internet becomes even more decentralized through things like Tor and you know even more sophisticated um, networks that are being developed, like Made Safe, I think is one. Mm -hmm. um, once the internet itself is decentralized, uh, this layer theory won't even apply to the internet. Mm. So, um, hmm. yeah, and, and plus this theory is 10 years old. It was, these guys wrote this paper or whatever it is, wherever this medium, this uh, theory was broadcast on in 2004. So it's, it's 10 years old, much A older than Bitcoin. A lot has changed since then. Yeah, much older than Bitcoin. So, um yeah, I don't think it's a really uh, valid theory to apply to Bitcoin, especially when we're talking about regulating it, because it just doesn't work the same as the internet. 